the prodigal son, when he returned to his father, he was back on track with the church. And let's say hypothetically, he gets on a podcast and they ask him the question. So what did you learn from this whole experience of veering off into the world? And the prodigal son's answer would be something like, well, I learned that sin is a waste of time. Let's go to Psalm 39 because we want to understand that we're here in this world for a short time. This simulator eventually ends. Just like Israel was in the wilderness, they weren't going to be there forever. They had a chance to enter the promised land, but they disobeyed God. And what happened? They went in circles for 40 years, all the way to the grave. That's what sinners do. They wasted God's time. Verse 4, O oh Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how short-lived I am. What does that mean to know my end? Death? That I'm going to die? You could look at it that way. Or that you'll be on a throne serving God at the end of all this. Behold, you have made my days as a handbreadth, and the span of my days is as nothing before you. Surely every man at his best state is altogether vanity. We only live up to 120 years. King David said some will live 70 plus 10 years. Surely every man walks in a vain show. Surely they are in an uproar in vain. That's a big waste of time. All of that is vanity. Solomon wrote a whole book about life. It's a big waste of time. If you do not allow God to shape you. And at the end of the book, he said, there's hope. That you fear God and you keep his commandments. That's what matters. That's what's not vanity, not a waste of time. He heaps up riches and does not know who shall gather them. And the ancient proverb tells us, Do not weary yourself to be rich. Cease from your own wisdom. When your eyes look upon it, it is gone. For surely riches make wings for themselves, and they fly into heaven like an eagle. It's a waste of time. This world is going to burn one day. That's why we store our treasures in heaven. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. So all the waiting, all the patience, that's godly time. Not wasting time. But the fool wants to sin now. Picture this in God's kingdom when it's complete. No more sin. No more wasting anyone's time. Every spiritual entity at that moment has qualified to live up there. We're going to look at the works of the flesh in Galatians 5. This is a definitive list of how to waste God's time on this earth. And none of these, there's 17 of them, will be in his realm. But we're going to read in Galatians 5 verse 21, after Paul lists them all, what happens to those people. Verse 21, concerning which I am telling you beforehand, even as I have said in the past, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Huh, why won't they enter? God won't allow them to. They're a waste of our time. All 17 of those works of the flesh will not exist in the kingdom of God. But they exist here right now. And you see how the world does it. They have to hire managers. They have to set up security cameras everywhere just to make sure the workers sin less. The wise proverb says, A sinful nation has many rulers. God's kingdom, 144,000. To rule an innumerable multitude of perfected beings and angels in an epic universe. How much wasted time did God deal with Satan in all his pride, corrupt merchandising, and his violent uprising against his kingdom? So let's read the Ten Commandments so that we don't waste God's time just like Satan did. Exodus 20 verse 3 You shall have no other gods before me. If you do, it's a complete waste of your time. Second commandment You shall not make for yourselves any graven image. 
These idols, they're mute. They don't speak. They're a complete waste of time. Number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. What is vanity? It's emptiness. But God's name is full of life. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why do we all go to God's secret meeting? Because we know it's not a waste of time. It points to the kingdom. Number five, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God gives you. This is the commandment with a promise. And what is that promise? Time, more time. And it's really eternal life in the land that he has sworn to give us. Number six, you shall not murder. All that hatred built up in your mind that led to murder. Complete waste of time. And then when you're caught, there's jail time. That's another waste of time. Number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Jesus said the only reason to divorce is if adultery is involved. So when you do have a divorce, look at all the paperwork that you have to file. Going to court, dividing properties, paying for alimonies. All of that is a waste of time. A godly marriage in the simulator will teach you how to be a wife to Jesus Christ when you're in the kingdom. Number eight, you shall not steal. Look at all the time and money wasted on creating locks. And then when thieves break into those locks, they have to create bigger locks. And then look at the internet age that we live in now. You have to have passwords. And then they have to be complicated with symbols and numbers. And, and what happens when you forget your password? You have to go and waste your time retrieving your password. The world spends $1 trillion a year in security. But think about in God's kingdom. All that time saved. All that money saved. Where we don't have to worry about it. Because no one will ever have a desire to steal your stuff. Number nine. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Just tell the truth. Don't waste other people's time because eventually they're going to get to the bottom of it and you will be brought to the light and you'll be shown a liar. Commandment number 10, you shall not covet. That's called fantasizing. Do you know how much time people spend just thinking about coveting? I wish I had that car. I wish I had that wife. But they're not producing. We only have so much time living here. But it's the perfect amount of time to prove to God whether we want it or not. So let's allow Him to prune us. And that we bear much fruit for Him. Because sin is a waste of time. Simulation complete.